Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. But tonight's picture is not from Hollywood. Once again, it's from the United Kingdom. Oh yes, yet, yet another from our dear British friends from across the big water. It's from 1957, The Long Haul, starring Victor Mature, Diana Doors, and Patrick Allen. It was made by Marksman Films, who received financing and distribution through Columbia Pictures. Now, Victor Mature, when he was in England making this picture, he also starred in a few films for Warwick Productions, who also distributed through Columbia. And uh, tonight's film was filmed, uh, it was filmed at British Lion Studios in Shepperton, with some filming being done on location up in the Scottish Highlands. And uh, I had the fortune of being there a few years ago to celebrate the occasion. I decided to go with Speyburn tonight. Uh, it is a Scotch from the region up there. So I thought it'd be perfect to celebrate, you know, with the picture here tonight. And I'm very fortunate that it, it, it is distributed to the U.S. Now, Diana Doors, uh, and she's the British actress in tonight's picture. She might not be as familiar to American audiences, but the best way to describe her is Diana Doors was, for this era, was the British Marilyn Monroe the British Mamie Van Doren, the British Jane Mansfield. Okay, you're getting the idea here, right? Yeah, she was the British bada bing blonde bombshell for this era. Now, the picture here, it's about a discharged American GI who goes with his British wife back to her hometown in Liverpool, England, and there's a story, I'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, he goes with his British wife back to her hometown in Liverpool and he gets a job as a truck driver. But he soon becomes involved in his boss's smuggling operation and involved with the boss's mistress. And things start to go haywire when one big smuggling job they're looking to pull off runs into a bunch of snafus. Now, what caught my eye about the picture was that the storyline is set in Liverpool. My childhood best friend in junior high was from Liverpool, uh, home of the Beatles, and he never let you forget it. But uh, yeah, that, that's where he was from. His family moved here to the U.S. when he was four and they eventually moved to Marion, you know, my hometown, when he was maybe eight or nine. Now, what we would do is he'd spend like Friday nights at my house. We'd stay up late, watch the horror movies, or I'd go to his house and spend the night and watch all the late night movies. And Oh, we had some good times together, let me tell you. Now, as the years rolled along, he eventually lost his accent, but not his mom. Even for as many years as they were here in the U.S., she still spoke the Queen's English. But oh yeah, we had some good times together, let me tell you. So, to Steve Rowe, wherever you are today, cheers. From 1957 in the United Kingdom, the long haul. Tally ho!
Are you kidding? You know what you can do with this weather. What do you care? This time next week you'll be back in the state. You mean it came through? Don't ask me. Ask the captain. See ya. Good luck. You lucky stiff. Ah, you guys get over. Harry? Hiya, sweetie. Hiya, Butch. Say, you're up awful late. Way past your bedtime. He insisted on waiting up till you came home. Hi. Hi. Hey, Pa, guess what? I should have fed today. You did? And a lion. And a tiger. Wow. We went to the zoo. <laughs> See, Butch, how would you like to go somewhere where they've got real lions and real bears? Gee, when can we go, Daddy? Oh, in about a couple of weeks. We'll be taking a long airplane trip. You, me, and Mum. You mean we're going to America? That's right. Well, you be a good boy. Go to sleep. I'll tell you all about it in the morning. Night, Daddy. Night. Night, Mom. Good night, Johnny. So your discharge came through? Yeah. You don't seem very pleased about it. I'll be very pleased to get away from this sort of life. Six years of living in married quarters. I began to feel as if I joined the army myself. You don't want to go to America, do you? Look, Con, I know that we've been through this before, but I still don't understand why. Super, get Why, me Connie? Me. I just don't want to go, that's all. But, Connie, everything's all set. Al's taking me into his business. Al. I don't believe Al even has a business. Are you kidding? His father left him one of the largest canning factories in California. What's he going to do? Make you a partner? I don't understand you, Connie. You were right here in this room the day that Al left. You remember what he said? He said a lot of things. He was a big talker all, all right. All right, all right. So he was a big talker. But he's always played it straight with me. What do you have against him? Nothing to do with Al. It, it, it's just... Just that... what? Well, Harry, couldn't we wait a while? Oh. All we seem to have done these past six years is pack and unpack. Well, I've got a home, too. And a mother that I haven't seen since we were married. Couldn't we spend a few months in England before we go to America? You mean in Liverpool? Well, it is my home, Harry. All right. We'll spend a few months in Liverpool. But what do I do for a job? Well, Uncle George would find you something. Uncle George, huh? Look, Harry. I love you very much. I wouldn't want to stand in your way. You know that. If you just do this for me... Well, it looks like, uh... I'm gonna quit working for Uncle Sam. And start working for Uncle George. <sighs> Thank you. Come here. Oh, no, Harry, you a steak. It'll burn. Who's hungry? <laughs> pound a week plus meal and lodging allowance for a 44 hour week. I should have stayed in the army. Hey, tighten them ropes. Do you want to lose that load? Got to watch them all the time. Well, there you are. Take it or leave it. I don't have much of a choice, do I? All right, come on. This is yours, Miller. How far is Glasgow? 200 miles. This'll take about 10 hours, huh? Well, you've been reading them rules and regulations. In this game, if you can't make 400 miles a day, you're fired. So climb aboard, me boy, and let your Uncle Casey lead the way.
Hello. Hi. Coffee. Have a coffee. Thank you. Well, we made pretty good time there, eh? We sure did. There's nothing like a strong cup of tea for keeping the weather out. Who are your friends? I never saw them before in my life. They look kind of sharp. Sharp as razors. Well, guess I'll get going. Yeah. What's your hurry? We have a long way to go. The way you drive, I'll need a head start. Won't you even have the manners to wait till I finish my tea? See you on the road. Put that stuff back. You gotta be wet down there, son, aren't you? Go on, beat it. Preservers, what are you after doing? These two guys are trying to steal things from your truck. Boy, you've got a lot to learn about this kid. Look, Casey, they put... Do me a favor. Get out of here. Look, Casey... Come on, come on, come on. I'll explain later. Come on. All right. Another time, eh? Okay, hold it there. You made good time and didn't expect this look till the morning. Where can I get a return load to Liverpool? You're in your end here, aren't you? That's right. There's only one man to see, Joe Easy. Isn't much moves in and out of this dock that he doesn't handle. Left it again down the street there. You can't miss it. Thanks. Aberdeen's. Who's for Aberdeen? Edinburgh. Anyone for Edinburgh? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What's the load? Big iron. How much? Fifteen bob a ton. Well, all right. Name? Gray. So. Yes? Liverpool. What have you got? Ten tonner. Name? Miller. All right, wait a minute, Whip. <laughs> Dundee, a load of sheet metal to Dundee. Did you get that much? I picked him up on the road. I guess he must have got lost. <laughs> what are we going to do with you, eh? <laughs> I got a little kid at home know what to do with him. You want to sell it? Here, yeah, you have... Say, thanks. I'd uh, like to pay you for it. Mr. Uh, Cardiff. I'm glad to get rid of him. Thanks. Mr. Cardiff. Yeah, me. Thanks. Mr. Inverness. Anyone for Inverness? What's the load, mate? 30 lines. Oh, 30. Why don't you mail it? <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool. Liverpool, anyone? Here. A load of timber for Liverpool. Any offers? I'm right here. I'm going to Liverpool. Name? Kenny. Hey, just a minute. Look, I've been waiting over here. Hey, what's the idea? Sorry, Chum. That's his load. I didn't have it. 
I'll find out what's going on down here. We take it in turns here, son. Look, I just checked in outside of... Okay, put it somewhere else, will you? Come on, come on. Uh, Joe. What? Did you okay this contract? That's my signature, isn't it? Look, do you mind... The man wants to see you, Joe. What is it? What do you want? I've got an empty truck. I'd like to fill it. Then back on the right. I've tried there. Your man doesn't want to do business with me. Well, maybe he doesn't like your face or something. Now, go on. Get out of here. I got work to do. You Look, heard this. All I want is a job. Come on, let's go. Find the dog. Get him out of here. Come on, out of it. You two beat it. The thing I wish I could do without this business was truck drivers. I seem to remember you drove a truck once yourself. No, things were different then. No unions, no nothing. No, it was a real tough game. But no rules. Except this. And you're still playing by the old rules, aren't you? Oh, that brother of yours is beginning to get in my hair. He's a smart boy, Joe. I'm sure. He's probably the smartest bookkeeper who ever came out of jail. We all make mistakes. Yeah, I made a mistake the day I took him on. But he's still going to go on working for you, isn't he? Well, are you coming? Because I'm tired and I want to go home. Look, why don't you go across the street, get a cup of coffee, and I'll be five minutes. Five minutes. Badly hurt. Ooh. What's the matter? What happened? Now give me a hand with him, will you? Sure, sure. Let's get him inside. Dad, what happened? I'll get some brandy. Wow. Ben, give me the brandy. Quick. for a job. You ask for a job and they gave you the business, eh? Here. Thanks. Hey, 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 hey! That ain't beer! Are you going to be all right now? Yeah. Oh, hell. Thanks. Say, hey, um, how about taking a couple of days off? Take Connie and the kid away for the weekend somewhere. What's the angle? This isn't Christmas. I'd like you to make a run into Glasgow tonight. 
You gotta be kidding. I've been driving all day long. I'm bushed. There's a bonus in it, if you'll do it. Do what? There are 500 crates of whiskey on that vehicle. Well, that's a new twist, taking scotch into Scotland. You know, I thought that uh, Casey was on the Glasgow run this week. That's just it. Well, I guess I could use a couple of days. And a bonus. I could definitely use that. All right, then. Okay. It is. We missed the preliminaries. Hey, Len! Hello. Yes? Yes, that's right. Come on, will you? We'll miss the main part. I should oh, break my this? neck to see a boxing match. Just a moment. Joe, it's for you. I'm not here. It's a man called Casey. Says it's very urgent. Yeah? Speaking. Well, who is driving it? You're sorry. What is it? The whole thing's set up, then someone has to get smart. Well, are we working or playing? Relax, will you? Ed, Joe. It's a new deal. Yes, yes, I know. Now listen. The truck just left. Get on that road, find it. Soon as it stops, ring me. No, I'll handle this one myself. Hello, Miss Daisy. Hi, Mr. Daisy. Hello, Miss Daisy. I hear you're an honest man. you have out there. Maybe we, we could do a deal. Look, suppose you were to take a walk. Go out back, have a wash or something. Ten cigarettes. Ten cigarettes. I thought I told you to wait in the car. I'm getting just a little tired of waiting for you, Joe. I'm hungry and I want to go and eat somewhere. You want to eat something, then eat something. Pig house. Listen, you were serving in a pig house like this when I picked you up, baby. Watch out, I don't drop you right back among the pigs. You want to walk back to town, Joe? Because I'm taking the car. I wouldn't do that. Hey, <laughs> hey fellas. This must be the only cafe on the road that has a floor show, huh? <laughs> Look, 
lady. I've got enough trouble of my own. Please, I can... just drive me somewhere. I can't do I've it. I've got to get away from here. Please. All right. Are you in love with that guy? In love with Joe? Nobody loves Joe, except maybe Joe. You were so upset, I thought maybe you... My old man used to get drunk and knock me around. And I hated him. But one day the police came and took him away and... And I cried. It's funny. When you don't have much, you don't like losing it. It's just Frank I'm worried about. He's my brother. You see, Joe puts up with him on account of me, but I don't suppose he'd ever get himself a job anywhere else. You're married, aren't you? Does it show? I can always tell. Married men are more... simpatico. Well, that's Italian. It means sort of... Sympathetic. <laughs> you know something else I like about you? You haven't tried to make one pass at me. Usually when a fella takes a girl out and buys her a meal, he thinks that she's the dessert. Well, shall we go? Okay. Harry? Thanks. What for? Being simpatico. Tired, mister. Been driving long? All night. We got rooms. Want to rest up a little? You and the wife?
better close this up. You'll catch cold. What's the name of this place? Wayside. Give me the police, please. Hello? My name's Miller. I'm at the Wayside Cafe on 859. I just had my truck stolen. Harry, what happened? What's going on? Is that your truck? Did somebody steal it? It's quite an act you put on. The next time you get back to that boyfriend of yours, no. tell me the next time I see him, I'll break both of his arms. No, Harry, you're wrong. Harry, listen to me, please. I didn't have anything to do with it. Why, if you were short of cash... You think I was in on it? Well, what did you stop for? Because I was tired. How about the girl? Was she tired, too? And you call in for one of the oldest gags on the road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you're in for a hard time of it now, because the insurance companies won't touch you after this. And I don't think Connie's going to be very happy about it, either. Who was she, Harry? Some girl you picked up on the road? Suppose we don't talk about it. Well, I want to talk about it. I don't. Well, I hope it was worth it. Well, so now you're out of work. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what we're going to do. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to grab the steamship company. I'm going to buy three tickets for America. Tonight, I'm riding out and telling them we're on our way. I won't go, Harry. What do you want me to do, Connie? Stay here and scratch around trying to make a living when I've got a good job waiting for me back home? I'm not going. All right. You go to America. But you'll go without me. Find her, Mr. Easy. We went back to the cafe, but she'd gone. Gone where? She got for that truck driver? Well, did she or didn't she? I don't know, Mr. Easy.
truck driver. Frank. Yes, Joe? I want you to go out and find that sister of yours and bring her back here. How? In chains? I don't care how. I just want it back here, that's all. Oh, it is real cold, real cold. Cold enough to freeze the head off a grease monkey. Well, how you been? Not so good, I hear. Ah, that's bad, bad. Nothing so degrading for a man as to be looking for work. Oh, well. There's something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, care for a drink? I have a little job on hand. I need uh, someone to drive a truck. Someone reliable. Uh, like yourself, for instance. There's, uh... There's 200 pounds in it for you. Sounds pretty crooked. Crooked? How oh, well, a little uh, bent, maybe. I'll see you later, Casey. Hey, what's the matter? You and the family given up eating? Don't worry about me and the family. I'll get a job. Doing what? You're on the list, Harry. Once you're on the list, you're dead. Sorry, chum, can't use you. Say. Are things getting so tough he has to rob himself? Okay, Tom, let's have you. Right. Looks like they run out of gas. Nothing like a nice fire in a cold night. All right, Casey, let's go. Be seeing you, boy. Get her up to the edge. Right. Okay, that's enough. Understand it. I know that road like the back of my hand. There's nothing to it. Unless something went wrong with the steering. 
We didn't find any skid marks. Still, we'll be able to have a proper look in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well? You'll be required to give evidence at the inquest, of course, Mr. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, of course. What do you want? What's this? What's it look like? It's all burnt. So is Casey. Now, give me my money. It's too bad about Casey. Getting killed like that? It's not going to work out, Joe. Police aren't stupid, and neither is the insurance company. Why don't you wrap it up? You must have really needed that money. What's the matter? Can't you afford her anymore? She buying too many dresses? Got her too many clubs? Hmm? Just a little too rich for your blood, huh? What are you talking about? I'm talking about Lynn. That's what I'm talking about. What's the matter with you, Easy? Did you lose something? I don't know where Lynn is. But I thought... Well, you thought wrong. Hey, Lynn wants to see you. She's in Liverpool. She's working in a club called the Congo, Oni. Don't tell him I told you whatever. Hey, Brian! Come in here, will you? That's what you're here for, so they pay you for and then come on! The lady's dancing with me. trying to tell me. I deliberately overinsured a vehicle, had it pushed off the road, then killed the driver. Is that what you're getting at? Well, I wouldn't put it exactly in those words, Mr. Easy. Then how would you put it? Mr. Easy, all I know is that the insurance company isn't very happy about this accident, and they've asked me to investigate the matter and to make out my report. And you'd better get out of here and make your report, hadn't you? Very well. 
That ship in the first just come in, Joe. Okay. Shall I put an extra watchman on tonight? Yeah, yeah, sure. Good night. Next time you come, let me know. I have a lawyer here. I think that would be advisable, Mr. Easy. and the insurance company breathing down our necks. And this came this morning. What's that? A final demand from National Oil. 8,000 quid. Hey, hey! Those are stable pelcher handling, not bananas! What are we going to do, Joe? What do you mean, we? You only work here, remember? Now, look. I'm the company's secretary. I'm just as eligible to go to jail as you are. I've been inside before and I didn't like it. Yes, sir? Give me Coastal Steamship Company, Liverpool. You know the trouble with you, Frank? You're in the wrong business. With your stomach, you should be selling ladies' underwear or something. Hello, it's McNaughton then. Yeah, hold on. Sam, that American, what's his name, Miller? Know where I can get a hold of him? I've got no address here, Joe. All I know is he lives in Liverpool. Never mind, I'll find him. Haven't you got some work to do? Mac, Joe, easy. Fine. Say, look, I'm coming down to Liverpool this afternoon. I want to talk to you. Hello again. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a great line there. You know, where Victor Mature, he says, Oh, now that's a twist. Taking scotch into Scotland? <laughs> I mean, you know, he's got a point. I mean, that would be like thinking you would have to ship bourbon into Kentucky. <laughs> but old Lynn here, she certainly set him up, didn't she? You know, having her boyfriend steal his truckload while they were in bed together. <laughs> now, Victor Mature, and he's the one playing Harry here. You know, he was in Cry of the City that I just brought you a few weeks ago. But uh, Victor Mature, he was born in Louisville, Kentucky, and he attended high school at St. Xavier and also Kentucky Military Institute. His first lead role was 1940's One Million B.C. In that, he had the role of a caveman, and he was in that with Carol Landis and Lon Chaney Jr. Now, when World War II came along, <laughs> this is an interesting story. When World War II came along, he tried to enlist in the Navy, but they rejected him for being colorblind. So what did he do? He went to the Coast Guard recruiting station and enlisted with the Coast Guard by taking a different eye test on the same day. <laughs> and then during the war, uh, he served aboard a ship on the Greenland Patrol, also uh, served in transporting troops to the, to the Pacific Theater, and of course he did, you know, the war bond tours and also acting in morale shows for the troops. And then of course after the war, he did resume his acting career. Now, after the war, he became famous. Uh, when he really made his name in Hollywood was when he appeared in a number of Sandal movies. Uh, sandal movies, they were a very popular genre of the time, so named because they were often set during Biblical or Roman times, hence the term Sandal movies. Uh, his two best ones, Far and Away, Samson and Delilah, and also The Robe. But he did do his fair number of noirs as well. Uh, two that I've already brought you, you know, of course, Cry of the City, but also I Wake Up Screaming. He was in that with Carol Landis again, and that one also had Betty Grable. 
Uh, but he was also in Kiss of Death, The Shanghai Gesture, Gambling House, Moss Rose, and Interpol, which was a British noir like tonight's picture. So let's get back to the long haul. So what? I want to talk to him. I don't want to talk to you. And to. I think you will. And to. I'm saying. Make your hair curl. What is it? Well, yes or no? to a lot of money, my friend. I don't think you'll get away with it. Those skins will be so hot they'll sweat. You'll be stuck with them. In this country, maybe. I'm told I can get a very good price for them in America. Yes, I have a friend. Runs a small cargo boat between here and Boston. Plenty of room on board if you'd like to come along. I wouldn't advise staying in this country after doing a job like this. Well, you should change your mind. What do you think? Harry, what's the matter? Nothing. But you were going to ring me last night. What happened? Look, I... I had things to do. I'll see you around. But when? Look, baby, I... What about this afternoon? We could meet in the park or something? Please, Harry. Okay. Not for. Butch! 
Keep it down to Aurora. It's got engine trouble. Take it to the garage. Take the dog with you, too. Go and play in the wall, Johnny. Go on. I'm going out and get some cigarettes. Why don't you take Johnny with you? He hasn't been out all day. It's raining. Well, it'll be all right if he wears his coat. Come on, Johnny. You're going out. Let's go. Come here. Let's go, Witch. Harry. Take care. You play on the switch. I'll be over in a minute. Okay. You're a butch, aren't you? Yeah. How do you know? Is that a dog? I got a dog. Really? Would you like this one? Gee, thanks. There you are. Thank you. It was all right. It was going along fine. I, I didn't try and move in on you. Well, all I asked was just a little bit of your life. Is that too much to ask? I've tried. It, it won't work. It just won't work. But you're still in love with me, aren't you? Well, aren't you? I don't know. All I know is I have a wife and a kid, and they both need me. I need you, Harry. Not that way. Turn me inside out. Just leave me. Harry, do you hear me? You can't do this to me. Are you hurt, Butch? Huh? Any bones broken? Ah, you'll be all right. Come on, we'll go home. Is he hurt? He's all right. Goodbye, Lynn. I'm sorry. I'm 
feel much. I didn't cry, did I, Daddy? No, you didn't, son. There. Now you go and get undressed. Are you all right? Do you still feel sick? Go on, then. The police were here. What'd they want? They wanted to see you. Something to do with an accident, with a truck. Hmm. What's going on, Harry? You've been like this for days. You hardly talk to me. You come and go. You don't tell me where you've been or what you've been doing. The man was coming to fix this. You don't live here, Harry. You're just lodging. Hey, look what I got. That's nice. Where did you get that? A lady gave it to me. Lady? What lady? The lady in the park. She was crying. Why was she crying, Daddy? You've got to go to bed, Butch. But go I... Go to bed, Butch. Go on, Johnny. Here. I'll come up and see you later. Night, Mom. Good night. Night, Daddy. Night. Do you have to take the boy with you when you go to meet your girlfriends? Who was it this time? Someone else you picked up? Don't tell me it's the same one. How romantic. You in love with her? Look, Connie. It's over with. It's finished. Are you? Then why the big sacrifice, Harry? Why so noble? Because I don't want to break up our marriage. You're not doing your best to hold it together. You haven't done anything to help either. One thing you did to me no woman should ever do to a man. You stood in my way. You knew I didn't want to stay here. And the minute I gave in to you, what happened? Everything went wrong. Everything. All right. That's the way you want it. I won't stand in your way any longer. Go to America if you want to. And take her with you. I'm staying right here. I don't know that I want you here. You're forgetting we have a kid. We can manage without you. Well, you're not going to manage without me. He needs a home, doesn't he? He's as much my kid as he is yours, isn't he? Is he? Is he, Harry? What do you mean by that? Honey, I'm asking you. What did you mean, that? I'm asking you a question, Connie. Answer me. He is ours, isn't he, Connie? He is yours, man, isn't he, Connie? Answer me! Who was it? I love you, Harry. Who was it, Connie? It'll happen before we were married. I just don't. Who was it? Al. It was Al. <laughs> Hey, Charlie. Hi. Get those furs loaded. Are they not due to go until tomorrow? I said get them loaded. You're the boss. Ted, drop that. Get number six back up here. Oh, we're still working on this one. Never mind that one. Get number six up here. There's a little harbor down here just south of Auburn called Penry. Hmm. Now, I've looked up the charts, and I reckon I can get in there between six and seven o'clock tomorrow morning. So if I can get the truck there by daybreak... You can be away before the tide drops. 
After that, I'll call it Liverpool and collect my regular cargo. Well, look who's here. Come on in. I'll shoot for gas. You've got enough to get into London. Yeah, sure. Thanks. You're not going to leave me here. Look, you got me into this. You must get me out of it. Give me the police. What are you doing? Telling him to come and pick you up? No. I'm going to report a robbery. A truckload of furs. Put down that phone, Frank. Put it down, Frank. Do I come with you or don't I? You don't give me much choice, do you? Please. Thank you. 
Never mind. Come on. Oh, look, Joe. I said come on. There's a police trap down the road. I thought you said Frank was driving. Never mind about Frank. Get in. Well, what happened to Get him? Get in. Side road, just on the left. Get this straight, Joe. If anything's happened to Frank... Frank, Frank. I've had a belly full of Frank. Here it is. Stop for the railroad. You must have taken a wrong turning. You navigate. I'll back her up. Are you kidding? Up this good track? Look, look at this fight of me. Another 15 miles, and you want to give up? Well, what do we do now? Pitch a tent? You might as well. This is as far as we're going tonight. Look, are you mad? It's not going to wait. If we're not there by 7 o'clock... Look, in two look. hours, it'll be daylight. I don't care what you do. I'm going to get some sleep. Found out where we are. Yeah. Right in the middle of nowhere. See those hills over there? Yeah. Where we want to go is 15 miles over the top of
That's not going to do any good. So what do you suggest? Well, there's one thing we can do. What? What are you doing? Look, are you out of your mind? You've got 500 pounds worth there. Better than blowing 500,000 pounds, isn't it? Come on. Come on, shove off. Hurry up! All right, push off! as soon as it gets dark. You'd better keep well out of sight. How is he? He'll be all right.
kid. Not right. I left him. No money, nothing. Oh, now, wait a minute, Harry. You're not thinking about going back or anything, are you? We could send them some money. The police will pick you up in five minutes if you go ashore. Please listen to me, Harry. We could get somebody to take the money. Harry, please! Get away from that door. Harry! Harry! Harry, don't be silly. You'll never make it. Let me go. Have you lost your senses? Get back down below. We'll be back. We'll pull out in half an hour. You'd better be quick. Not yours. But Harry, they're bound to be looking for you. They may even be watching the house. Please, Harry. Right. Here. Yes. Could I come in for a moment? What do you want? Harry asked me to give you this. Are you the... Yes. Hey, Mrs. Miller? Yes, Doctor? I shall have to call an ambulance. An ambulance? Why, what, what's wrong? What's the matter with him? The boy has a brain hemorrhage, Mrs. Miller. He must have banged his head rather severely somehow. I see he's got rather a bad bruise. How did that happen? The other day he... he... he fell. He was... Oh, well, we must get him to hospital straight away. Excuse me. and docks. What's the matter? Nothing. Everything go all right? Mm. How'd she take it? She took it. The kid. Did you see? Well, did you? Driver, could you go quicker? We're in a hurry. Then is, is there something wrong with him? Then I'm asking you, is there? Harry. Taking him to hospital. Hospital? Why? I, I don't know. The doctor said something about banging his head. Drive it to her and go back. Harry, are you crazy? The police are there watching the house. Please listen to me. Turn around and go back, driver. Harry, don't you understand that in a couple of days we'll be a hundred miles away from here? I love you. I love you like I never loved anybody before in my whole life. <laughs> I couldn't bear it if you took it away from me again. Please, Harry. Please. What do you want me to do? Go 
go back. Congo Club? Yes. Just take me there. Welcome back. So, turns out that Harry's wife had had her own little bada bing fling, huh? So here she is, the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> now, for you car buffs out there, that white car that Joe and Frank were driving around, that was a 1956 Ford Zephyr. It was made by Ford of Britain. It's the Ford Motor Companies. That's their division in Britain. And the Zephyr was not sold in the U.S. It was marketed exclusively in its overseas markets. So that's why you might have noticed, like, if you ever see the front end of the car in the picture here, it doesn't have the grill ornament, you know, the characteristic blue oval disc you know that says Ford in the middle of it so yeah it was that different of a division now one thing I'm gonna call out the picture on here that scene up in the Scottish Highlands where Harry and Joe get out of the truck you know to push that boulder off the road come on you saw how big that boulder was there is no way the two guys are going to push a boulder that big. <laughs> I'll tell you, that, that one was a little stretch of the imagination there. But we did have a very tense, exciting end to the picture. Now, Diana Doors, and she's the one playing Lynn. Of course, got to get to Diana Doors, right? She was born in Swindon, County Wiltshire, England. And I have been to her home county. It was just a little over a year ago. Uh, it was me, Mrs. Detective, and one of my little detectives. We went to visit Stonehenge. Uh, and Stonehenge is in the south part of County Wiltshire. 
Swindon is up in the northeast part of the county, so they're not necessarily close to each other. But on the swing of making that loop, we were in the town of Ave. Uh, it was Avebury. It's a very old historic town in that part of England. Uh, it, it dates to the medieval era. In fact, uh, even Avebury has some stone circles that go around the village. And Avebury, it's only about eight miles southwest of Swindon, Diana's hometown. Now, interesting story with her was during World War II, she entered a beauty contest for a pinup girl for Soldier Magazine. It's a British Army publication, you know, something that they would distribute to the troops. And she came in third place, which sounds good. But you saw her in tonight's picture. Is, is this a gorgeous dame or what? Third place? And I'm thinking, well, then who were the first two? <laughs> Now, in the late 1940s, she appeared in a number of roles for Rank Films, which is a huge British film company. But they were mostly, you know, support roles or small bit parts. But she really hit her fame with 1951's Worm's Eye View. It was a comedy and it was a very popular film in Britain for that year. Now, of her British films, her best ones that she's best remembered for of her British films were probably films like The Weak and the Wicked, A Kid for Two Farthings, Yield to the Night, and of course, Tonight's Picture. Now, it was about 1956-1957, she did come over to this side of the big water and she did a handful of films in Hollywood. Now, of her Hollywood work, probably her best there was The Unholy Wife, I Married a Woman, On the Double, and King of the Roaring Twenties. And then she went back to Britain and really did the m most of her career as far as cinema films in Britain. But she did do a fair amount of TV work on both sides of the big water. And she also uh, did some recording. Uh, she was something of a recording artist, uh, a number of LPs and singles. But uh, for a number of years, she became uh, a lot of tabloid fodder for her very notorious adult parties. And you probably know what I mean by that. So yeah, she was certainly tabloid fodder for a number of years. But she did pass away in 1984 with complications from ovarian cancer at the relatively young age of 52. And, as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood and the United Kingdom. Until next time.